Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another Monster Hobbies A Model Car Garage Show and Shine video. Today we're going to be looking at one of my dad's great models. This is the Rolls-Royce Phantom 2, another really great kit from Monogram, which has not been on the market since 1982. This is the 1972 version, so without further delay, let's go down and check it out. The Rolls-Royce Phantom 2 was the third and last of Rolls-Royce 40 over 50 horsepower models. The Phantom 2 used a refinement of the Phantom 1's 7.7 liter pushrod overhead valve straight six engine with a new cross flow cylinder head and a four speed manual transmission bolted directly to the engine. Only 1,680 were produced from 1929 to 1936 and the United States market versions were built at Rolls-Royce factory at Derby in Derbyshire in England. Only the chassis and mechanical parts were made by Rolls-Royce. The body was made and fitted by a coach builder selected by the owner. The Rolls-Royce Phantom II was the car of movie stars and Maharajas. When Marlene Dietrich went to the USA in 1930, director Joseph von Sternberg welcomed her with gifts including a green Phantom II. The car appeared in their first US film, Morocco. The Phantom II also appeared in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. It was owned by the Sultan. The Rolls-Royce has a wheelbase of 150 inches, which is equal to 6.25 inches in 1 24th scale. Overall length of the Rolls-Royce is 222 inches, which is equal to 9 and a quarter inches in 1 24th scale. The curb weight of the car was 5,490 pounds. Incidentally, Frankenstein came out in the same year of 1931. In 1931, the price for a Rolls-Royce Phantom II cost $19,000 American, which is equivalent to you today paying $270,000 785 and 72 cents American. The monogram Rolls-Royce Phantom II Henley convertible came out in 1965, 1968, 1972 and 1982. These are the box tops associated with that model. There is also a 1931 Rolls-Royce Phaeton that came out in 1978. All these model kits only came out in those years and no new versions have been made since. When my dad built his Rolls-Royce Phantom II, he didn't paint much on the body. He basically built it that old school way again with the plastic being molded in gloss black and then my dad painting some silver up along the trim here, painted the roof with the tan, and then he also painted in those authentic Philippines mahogany wood that was used on the running boards back in the day. This model kit features opening doors, opening rumble seat, opening glove box door, and removable top, and removable hood, as well as steerable wheels, which we will look at in just a minute. Here is what the Rolls-Royce looks like with the hood removed, the wheels turned, the doors opened, and the rumble seat up. And as you can see, there are a lot of operating parts on this model. This is quite a classic gem for those that are looking for a real challenge. However, there aren't very many of these around, so if you can find one, grab a hold of it right away. Here's the Rolls-Royce engine from the driver's side. And here you can see our straight six. This is the intake manifold and down below we have our updraft carburetor. We also have our steering linkage and the starter motor. Here we have our Rolls-Royce straight six engine from the passenger side. You can see the exhaust manifold. Now the manifold has two cylinders exiting out of each of the three pipes. And this goes down to our muffler and tailpipe. 
Down below you can see the generator and a magneto in the back. Now this was something special that Rolls-Royce had to engineer so that these would turn at the same rate. You could cut in between the generator or the magneto as you were driving. Here we have the dashboard from the passenger side of the Rolls-Royce. You can see my dad painted in the nice mahogany style dashboard. Right here, these little black things that are sticking out are actually the electric motors for the windshield wipers. Here we have our steering wheel that turns. And we also have our advance for the spark and all that great stuff. Down below, we have our floor pedals as well as the parking brake and the gear shift. Here we have the front bench seat, and my dad painted this with Tester's Gloss White. The doors do open, and we can see the wonderful door panels along here. Again, very nice and simple. Right here we have our rear view mirror mounted onto our V-butted windshield post. Now here I've opened up our rumble seat so you can see the nice white upholstery. Again, dad used Tester's Gloss White. And this little door I thought was for the golf clubs, but actually it is really shaped in order for the rear passengers of the rumble seat to be able to swing their legs in and get in this back compartment. You could again use it for your golf club doors, so there you go. Here we have our chassis and undercarriage of the Rolls-Royce, and here we have our long leaf springs. These were not covered with the spring covers. There's our rear axle, you could see just how beefy this is, and the underneath of our engine. Rolls-Royce and many of the luxuriant car manufacturers of the day had these little metal pans underneath the engine in order that any rocks would be deflected off and not come up into the engine bay under the hood. Here Dad has painted the floor with some wood, but all this gray area and the black and even the chrome, these are all parts that were never painted. This does have the posable wheels, as you can see by the linkages, and the Rolls-Royce did have four-way drum brakes. Here's a close-up view of the operational steering and you can see that it works much like the Johan model kit steering. The front wheels rotate on their axis and you can see that the idler arm does not swing so that means that the steering wheel and steering column are pretty much dead in this kit. They do not actuate the steering wheel like the Johan and MPC model kits did. These long rods here are the actual cable controls for our brakes, which end up here on the rear differential. Again, you can see just how beefy that differential is. A really excellent build from Rolls-Royce back in the day, as well as transferred over to Monogram. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video where we got to see my dad's 1931 Rolls-Royce Phantom II convertible with a body by Henley. This again is another really amazing model kit in my dad's collection as well as now in mine because I've inherited it from my late father. And one thing that I would love to do is I would love to make a special museum based on all the model kits that both myself and my dad have made, the majority of them being model cars. And these model cars of course would be in some really great scenes. Now since this car was in Indiana Jones and many other movies, and was basically the sole transportation for movie stars and maharajas. I think it would be really cool to show this in one of those kind of settings. Maybe a maharaja in Hollywood talking with the movie stars. That'd be a really cool diorama, don't you think? If you're interested in doing that, in helping us out, I should say, don't forget to click that join button that's down below in our video. And you, for just as little as $3, which is not really a king's ransom, you can help us in order to work toward that museum dream. So until next time, everybody, don't forget to check out our model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, happy model building.